he didn't go pay Lobola. He went and fixed his mother's <laughs> kitchen. That's a part of the world. This is the, 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 the spell was real. You know? It was real. So. I was not going to have the cesarean section. I mean, yeah. I was not going to. I was just going to get the baby. That's it. And I was going to give birth naturally. Greetings uh, and my family. My name is Lucky Diteru. I am a son in the house, uh, a son of Apostle Alf Lukau and Bishop Celeste Lukau. Today I am here really in a privileged position with my wife to glorify God and to give him praise for what he's been doing in our lives. I'll give an opportunity for my wife to introduce herself. Uh, hi, and my family. My name is Azri Rambuda Didedu. Uh, a daughter at AMI also. Um, maybe just to honor our parents, I would love to honor dad and mom. We love you so much and we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, mom and dad. Thank you. We appreciate uh, who you are to us. Uh, we bless God for granting us blueprints of what it means to be children of God and to work with God. Your journey inspires us and we look to you because we know that God is using you mightily to you know build what we call the the Alpha Car generation and uh, we're happy to be part of that incredible journey in the beautiful tapestry of life love is often woven with threads of joy laughter and hope <laughs> lucky and as we newlyweds and deeply in love stood at the threshold of their forever dreaming of a future filled with laughter and the sound of little feet their home a sanctuary of precious memories filled with photographs capturing stolen kisses, whispered promises, and the sweet moments of their union. But life, in its unpredictability, holds unexpected turns. In the midst of their bliss, a shadow began to loom, a heartbreaking realization that the joyful news they so deeply longed for continued to evade them, and the hope of hearing a child's laughter slowly faded. <sighs> Let us hear their testimony. So family, I think um, the core thing for us was just to reflect on our journey with AMI. So we've been in AMI now for six years and counting, you know, it's been an amazing journey, you know, a journey of um, restoration. You know, when we came to AMI, um, I think I need to go a step back, you know, uh, just our encounter with AMI, it was absolutely uh, divine orchestrated, you know. So my wife often talks about God as the divine orchestrator of note. And, um, you know, just reflecting on our journey, it was essentially that. Um, I remember my son, Lisedi, was about two months uh, old and I was really gearing to travel abroad uh, on business. And my wife had to be with my mother and my mother being a prayer woman, you know, she insisted as she arrived that, no, we're going to play Christian television and in that, um, you know, we had an opportunity to encounter, you know, AMI on uh, Soweto, Soweto TV, where we got to see basically the men of God. So my wife and my mom got so hooked to, you know, seeing the work of God and the move of God through uh, the Apostle of the Cow. And, you know, that basically was the beginning of something absolutely uh, amazing. And lo and behold, you know, um, we, our lives, you know, got to be transformed by just an encounter that my wife had one day, you know, watching, um, you know, AMI on a Sunday. I remember that Sunday in August, you know, she's watching and uh, the man of God basically speaks and says, there is a woman, you're watching me. And, you know, talks about exactly what my wife was going through, that, you know, they have put a spell, you know, and, you know, and they've put this thing, you know, this ascent that you have and true to what the man of God was saying, whenever she would wear my jacket, whether for two minutes or whatever, that, that scent would remain. It was a distinctive scent that I've, I had made peace with it, as well as a, as a person to say, you know, people have their own scents, you know. And, um, but the men of God described this scent to say, they have put this because they don't want you to get married. You know, it's something that uh, people had done back home. There is a woman, I don't know how to put this, but I'm seeing, your prayer request is, Lord, I can't stay in a relationship. And the reason why you cannot stay in the relationship because there is a smell that you are fighting. There is a smell that you are fighting and this smell is persisting. You have tried it all. 
know that you are not clean the lord is saying a spell has been released against you and he wants us to break it now the persistent smell that uh, keeps on chasing every man away from you leaves you to the week before my wife had an encounter at work because she's in uh, in the entertainment space and of course you know they changed clothes quite a bit and a lady there who was um, actually a Sangoma uh, working there, she actually confirmed that on a Thursday leading to this time where the men of God spoke to my wife, you know, to say, um, you know, you make us work so hard, you know, because every time you wear something, we have to wash it. Every time we wear something, you have to wash it. And, um, you know, and she said, no, they have done something on you. You must go back home to get them to remove it, you know, get somebody to remove it, you know. And it was interesting that it's a Sangoma actually, you know, talking to that. So I want to give my wife an opportunity just to talk about um, just that experience. Yes, um, it was like we were watching at home, right? And then he just goes, there's a woman, you're watching me. Uh, there's this spell on you or not. And then I was like, okay, how does he know me? Man of God, like I've just started watching him. I don't know him, he doesn't know me. And then just um, going to work and the lady saying the same thing again, uh, exactly what the man of God had said to say there's a spell on you. I'm like, okay, uh, yeah, no, this is a real thing. Now finding out that it's gone, it was the same lady again who said to me, what did you do? Did you do something after the man of God had prayed, of course. And then she was like, did you go somewhere? I was like, yeah, a, a pastor prayed for me. But like, I didn't go into details that I was watching it live and then end. Then she was like, whatever it is that you did, go back, prayer works, right? The same Sangoma. So yeah, she was like, it's gone, it's out. We don't have to struggle anymore. And few years later, we, you know, happened to get married, right? Yeah. And just to go a step back, you know, so this is uh, on a Thursday, right? The, the Sangoma says this to her, there's something, they've done something to you. The Sunday, the man of God speaks to her on YouTube. She's watching YouTube, this is even pre-COVID, right? Uh, on a Monday, when she goes back to work, she says, Surprise, you know, <laughs> yes. what, what has happened? That thing that I spoke to you about on Thursday, it's gone. Yeah. And true to it, I mean, today, it's six years later, you know, um, she can wear my jackets as many times as she wants. <laughs> that thing is completely gone. And for us, when I mentioned that God is an orchestrator of note, um, this for me was God using my mom, right, to come to our house, you know, we watch AMI, we get hooked to, to AMI, she watches and, you know, she, God prays, uses the man of God to pray for her and this leaves. So, I mean, this was our beginning and where I really saw that uh, the God that I've always been hearing about, you know, growing up in, in Christian dom, you know, we grew up, you know, hearing about this God, but not really getting to encounter and experiencing him. So this was something that we knew about. And really, to be honest with you, when you look at how long this process had been, and I asked even my, my, my wife's mother to say how long had she had this scent. It was over 30 years, 30 years of really having that uh, scent, you know, and, you know, men of God praying, not even laying hands on her and that thing completely leaving. And it was interesting that during this time, it was a time where we, we, we had uh, a, um, a few years before our son was born, had gone for Lobola and stuff like that. And, you know, to really indicate that whatever they had done was working. Um, I remember when we went for Lobola and I went very, Prepared, you know, as a young man, you prepare to say, Ish, you know, I'm marrying into a royal family. I can't come there. Like competition is very tight, of course, you know. Uh, they would want her to get married to a royal and all kinds of stuff. So I had to prepare, you know. So um, I prepared, you know, money ready to say whatever price they would say, I will just put it there, you know. I'll give it, you know. <laughs> So, um, of course, before we went for Lobola, we made arrangements and all that stuff, you know. Um, but the night before we go, I got so sick and I was wondering what's happening, you know. And on top of that, we learned that, you know, my cousin um, had passed away and he didn't have the necessary resources to be able to, you know, to, for, for the burials and so forth. So I, I found myself in a very tight corner where I had to now decide that half of my Lobola money now has to go to bury my cousin and say the devil is a liar, you know. And then on the other hand now, what I wanted to do to make history, I, I couldn't make history because whatever spell at home there in, in Venda, and it was working. 
And here we're not talking about vendor, we're talking deep rural vendor. You know, this is the royal family. You know what happens in, in a lot of our royal families. And so when we, men of God brought this to light, you know, to say that it's something that they had done, I then understood that there was this resistance. And I, I said, I remember telling the family when we went, because I had to now pay it in part, you know, that we'll be back exactly in a, in a, in a month's time. Because I knew that all my plans were working well, business was going well. Jeez, I tell you, you know, the moment, uh, a month later, everything just went really haywire. You know, business going bad, deals going bad. Losing everything. Losing everything, losing my business, losing cars. my cars, losing, yeah. like literally losing business. To a point that we literally, um, I found myself from a, from a person who had a whole built floor in, of a building. My office was there, well furnished and all that, losing all of that to now working in coffee shops and, and, and so forth. At home. <laughs> working at home, and it was quite a, a, a challenging time, you know. I almost became like Job, you know, when Job lost everything overnight. Uh, that was basically my, my experience. And when the men of God talked about this, then it all started making sense. I understood that there was something spiritual that was actually preventing something good that God wanted to do, you know, in our lives, you know. And it took us almost two years to actually now pay the Lobola from a month to two years of struggle and you know trying to do it but we understood that um, once the men of God had prayed that something had, had, had shifted. And sometimes you you have a problem but you don't know that you have a problem mm -hmm. like you experiencing things but you don't really know where it's stemming from right so with this with the men of God saying no actually there is a spell that for me was okay there's this problem then the men of God just like literally said oh actually this is where the problem started from and from there you like aha now i understand i see why now i was so shy i see why now i had like low self-esteem i see why now i was so scared of driving trust me it took me forever to get a driver's license because i was so scared of driving and i don't even know why i was so scared i'd be like yo I, I, i'm not gonna be able to get in a car people will drive me that's pretty much what i used to say now i understand why like in as much as i was acting I was still having a whole lot of self-esteem still, like I would be hiding type of thing. Like, yes, I was always hiding and I realized, no, actually it was that thing. The not getting married situation as well, like I would meet a person and then all of a sudden they just repel and they don't want to be with me anymore. I think I must <laughs> add there, I must, I, I must add just to demonstrate that, I mean, this thing was real, right? Um, you know, it, it's almost like... I knew she, I knew her capacity, her capabilities. I knew she was capable of, you know, but she sort of always was, 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 was boxing herself and she was not really living to her full capacity or, or potential. It was like there was a, a, a veil or something that causes her star not to shine, mm -hmm. you know, that was just, just upon her. And talking about the marriage scenario, I mean, uh, before we got together, she, somebody had proposed to her, was no, supposed to, no. was supposed Proposed, but but then again, he didn't go pay Lobola. He went and fixed his mother's <laughs> kitchen. That's the part that I wanted to talk about. This, this thing, the spell was real, you know. <laughs> so the guy put, went to go get a loan, you know, for the for the Lobola. I'm grateful that it didn't happen right? because I wouldn't will not be here today. But he, he said instead of now taking this Lobola money to go pay Lobola, the guy went to now change his mom's kitchen units you know remove the kitchen and put the new kitchen <laughs> you know <laughs> well it was not funny then no <laughs> now it's funny because you know, you know we yeah. understand god is an orchestrator <laughs> yeah. right? so this thing was real you know it was absolutely absolutely real um but the moment this moved it shifted we just saw her just moving everything just just yeah. moved there was this ease that uh, just, you know, um, it was like air fatter, you know, uh, the doors yeah, were just, like just open. They were locked and the next thing, everything just opened. Just opened yeah. Oh, isn't this a beautiful testimony? On the sacred grounds of Ali Liu Ministries International on July 1, 2018, as we joined the online Sunday service, what once seemed like a boundless journey of love now led them down a path of deep sorrow and unanswered questions. In the silence, they searched, searched for hope, for meaning, and for a miracle that always seemed just beyond their reach. Despite her stunning beauty, as we had faced rejection in her acting career, often overlooked for roles due to this unfortunate issue. But that day marked a turning point 
as she embraced the blessings that followed. Let us hear their testimony as it continues. <laughs> 